Hey guys, John Breen here, back with another episode of the Breen Machine video blog. So, I'm really excited. I've got a camera to show you today. Shout out to Cognix for lending this to us. They've always been really good to work with and I'm looking forward to doing some more videos with this thing. I really want to jump into all the details, but now's not the time. I want to do an overview for you first and then we can dive in in future videos for each part. First of all, this is a smart camera and this is very common in industry. Uh, the, the smarts for the camera have to be somewhere, right? Sometimes we're We've got all the all the computations and programming inside the camera. That's why we call a smart camera. Sometimes it's outside the camera and it's in a vision processor. So why would you go one way or the other? Well, first of all, it's a little simpler to have one part number instead of two part numbers in a cable. Um, but there's also a cost component to it. If we have a powerful enough processor inside the camera, and then we do that for every camera, maybe we're wasting computation a little bit. Maybe we're buying more computation than we need. Whereas if we have several cameras without the computation and one vision processor, maybe we're saving some money on buying our processors. And I would generally say if, if you've got three cameras or more, it may be reasonable to look at getting a vision processor with IP cameras or something that don't have that. That being said, Typically, one manufacturer will focus on smarts in the camera and another manufacturer will focus on smarts in a separate vision processor. So based on your uh, choice in manufacturer, you may just get one or the other and that's not a big deal. So uh, you won't always have that option to, to even choose from and that's fine. Um, quick look at this camera. This is a smart camera. So it's all the smarts are inside of here. It's also got uh, a pretty nice autofocus lens and lighting built into it. So this is all one unit and that's very convenient for us. We'll talk about that more in future videos and it's not always that way. Often we have lighting in other places. We have a separate lens that screws on that's manual focus. That's all very normal. So you're not always gonna see exactly like this. Um, I wanna give you a quick overview of how we approach a vision application. Even though technology has changed and improved a lot in these cameras, we get faster processing, we, we get better algorithms and uh, better tools, the general approach hasn't changed in 20 years and I don't expect it's going to change much in the future. So first of all, we assess the application. Is this a good fit for vision? Uh, that's uh, Sometimes it seems like a silly question to ask. Well, if I can tell with my human eyeballs and my big human brain, if that's a pass or a fail, shouldn't a camera be able to do it? Well, I'm here to tell you that industrial vision usually just isn't that smart. It's trying to be fast, it's trying to be specific, and the algorithms aren't built to be a human brain. They're built to be industrial in what they do. And I'll give you a really good example of what's not a good application. It's the thing that always sticks out in my mind, probably because it was the first big learning experience in my early career. At the time we were trying to, we, we had a machine that would fill vials, long story short, and they wanted to quality check to measure the fill of those vials. These are little vials about this big. And every drop counts. We're trying to measure tiny little amounts of, of fluid. And so we had a camera for that. And it, it seems like it makes sense in theory, right? And someone even tested this beforehand and it worked okay in the lab. But in real life, there are splashes, there are bubbles, there are droplets here and there after the filling process. And so th that ended up being a very bad application for vision because every drop counts and you can't expect this camera to figure that out. Once you've decided it is a good application, uh, focus on what you want to measure and how accurately you want to measure it. Again, this is a thing that, that got ingrained into me very early in my career. Um, I would get assigned to a project and um, I, I, I developed the vision application, a measurement application, and the customer would come on site to look at it and start asking questions like, okay, well, how accurately can you measure? And as an engineer, I would always argue that's not the way to do it. Don't make the application and then decide if it's accurate enough. Uh, 
we're, we're engineers here. I want to measure this thing within this tolerance because that's how it was designed. Let's measure it that way. Do it up front. It, it really uh, makes things easier and better and it's the proper engineering direction. After we've identified the uh, application, then we start picking parts. We'll pick a camera based on how many megapixels, color, things like that. I'm going to go into a lot more detail on that in a future video. And then we figure out lighting. And I'm making lighting a separate note here because it is all important. This is the smarts outside of the programming. So the programming does one thing, but it's seeing what it sees based on how good we do the lighting. And we light the part in a way that highlights the things we care about and hides the things we don't care about or we don't want to see. That's why I say it's a smarts outside of the computation because it's making this thing's job a lot easier. It's making our jobs as programmers a lot easier. So quick examples, um, if we're looking at just the outside measurements of a part, maybe we wanna backlight it so that the part comes up as just one shadow. We don't see anything on the surface of the part, but we see all of the outlines. Another example is if we're measuring a label on a part. We want to see if that label is there or if it has the right information on it. We're going to have to top light it because we have to be able to see that label and the edges might not be as important in that case. One more good example is if we're trying to measure a 3D component to a part. Say it has uh, an embossed portion or features sticking up and we want to make sure they're there or measure them or, or make sure they're the right shape then we might want to light from the side because that really enhances it adds a lot of contrast to those surface features or to a texture so that's lighting after we get all this figured out it's time to actually make it work so again we're when we set it up we're going to mess with the lighting we're going to get it uh we're, we're going to be focused on getting a good image so focus exposure time gain again we'll talk about all these things in another video after that we program Usually that goes in the direction of first we find the part, we locate some, some part of the part that we're interested in, and then we inspect it. Could be presence absence, could be size or measurement, could be shape. After that, and I'm probably gonna say this a million times every video, runtime, runtime, runtime. You can make something that works great in the lab and until it gets out in the field and runs for a long time, it seems, uh, could be a week, could be a month, maybe you can do it in a couple days, you're not gonna know if it works for everything. Maybe there's some sensitivity that you don't know about to the color of the product. And so every million products, they make another batch. So a million products go through and it works just fine and the next batch it stops working or it starts having false rejects or false, pos false passes. Um, and that's a big deal. So plan runtime into your design, into your schedule. That's part of the project and it's not going to be right until you get that runtime. One more thing I want to say about runtime and, uh, and why you want to spend so much time with it. It's very common in industry nowadays for uh, the end customer when you're supplying, say, an automotive supplier and you're making a little knob for their dashboard uh, or, or for their for their HVAC system in the car, that has to be right. They don't want to have to quality check that. And you can lose contracts for one part in a million that's wrong. So you really want to make sure that this system is working right. You put these systems in place because they work more consistently than a human being and they work a lot faster than a human being. And maybe you want to program that so it's more likely to reject something that's a, no, that's a good part than it is to let through something that's a bad part. So uh, things to think about. Anyway, that's all I wanna talk about right now. Um, I, like I say, I'm gonna be doing more in-depth videos on this very soon. If you're interested in that, subscribe to the channel and you'll, you'll get to see them all as they come out. If you like this video, give it a like, subscribe to our channel. I'm really, I, I wanna do this for you guys. I wanna see other people learn and grow. That's what we're all about. And so I uh, validate me, give us a thumbs up. It makes me happy to, to see your comments and uh, see that we're interacting.